So, you see, um, I'm, I'm Mark from Songs of Praise doing an interview with Gwen Hussey for the mission's 13th anniversary, particularly for the Whitby Gop weekend. And <laughs> now, I have loads of questions for you. I mean, you've worked with people like Holly Murray, Dead or Alive, Fox, Sister and Mercy, but with you being a guitarist back then, when it came to the mission style and you became a singer and guitarist, was that destiny or did you have a another singer in mind when you first started with the mission? Well, no, we, but when Craig and I left the system and decided to form our own band, we, we, at that point yeah. we wanted to get someone else to sing. You know, we had a bunch of tunes which, uh, you know, which Eldridge rejected in the second season, which ended up being uh, most of the tunes which were in medicine. But um, we auditioned a couple of people and it didn't work, it didn't feel right, and Warner Brothers suggested a few people, and it's like, really? You're not really getting, I'm not really getting this, are you? So in, in the end, um, I remember... Craig and I were went to see Simon Denby in March Violets, and um, Simon said, "You do it. You know, you're better looking than him. <laughs> <laughs> you do it." So it's like I looked at Craig and it's like, "Shall I?" Yeah, come on. You know, it's like you know, you have to do. You don't worry about the words. String any old rubbish together, it'll be fine. I said, you know, there's only there's only other singers and journalists that worry about the words. Yep. So it's like, okay, I'll have a go. So basically, I kind of. I came into it by default, really. but um, uh, you know, um, it, it took me a little while to, wa to warm, warm to the uh, to the role. I think we did the first thing we did was a tour with the cult in Europe. And, uh, it, it took me a little while to find my feet. I think it's from uh, the little, you know, quite shy really. Yeah. You know, so Album being it seems very much a retrospective to the days like I've got on medicine and children. Which album do you think is closest to of all the mission albums that you've done? I think I know I'm, I'm being quoted as saying it's a, the, the cross, there's a missing link between first and last and raising gods and medicine. There's, there's definitely elements of that and gods and medicine. There's also, I do say, there's children in there too. And I think there's there's even bits like, I don't know, Jade, for instance, to me sounds a bit like Africa. It's a similar kind of vibe, you know. So I, I, think, I think there's elements of all the different periods of the band, to be honest. Um, I, I know when I set, set out to write the songs, I set out with the intention. I, I started writing the songs with the 12th string legend. Right, which informed. I mean, that's what you was always known for, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and which kind of informed the sound of the album as a starting point. But um, I, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's got a bit all periods of the band and consistency. And my work in consistency. Yeah, I mean, you can you can tell with I mean, from what I've heard of the album, you can tell which ones are where they were kind of a bit. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you know, um, and I have, I've seen some of the comments online, you know, and si the sisters lot can be, this, this faction of the sisters audience is uh, a, a bit sour, should we say, yeah. certainly towards me, I don't know why, um, and, um, Envy. I don't know, maybe, it's, uh, maybe they, they blame me for splitting the band up, but it wasn't me, you know, it wasn't my, my, my yeah. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't sack Gary Marks, it was Eldridge. I had to tell Gary Marx because Eldridge was telling him. All that stuff. Anyway, right. that's fine by But uh, I think um, you can't plagiarise yourself. No, that's very true. You, you, you can, uh, you know, recycle for sure. Which is what I've done. I've played 12 string guitar. I'm playing, playing it like I haven't played it for years. And it's, that's, there you go. That's the sound. I think it's, it's refreshing to hear that kind of sound coming back because that's what people, that's how people see the mission. So yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I did set out with the intention of, when we play places, clubs or whatever, and, and there's, you know, a DJ on, they quite often play records from the 80s. Yeah. And I, I think, well, where are all the new records? Where well, are all the new records that sound like this? And there isn't any, yep, really. Exactly. So I thought, well, you know, why do I want to try and make a record that sound like 1985? I mean, um, with every release, we live in hope, if yeah. not faith. Right. So, 
thinking about with especially with the new album with metamorphosis there's a line in it saying with age with age comes change mm -hmm. in the last th in 30 years of you doing the mission apart from the obvious that everybody gets older what do you think has actually changed well, yeah. well i think i think I, I would be unable to write something like wasting the severina now um some people might say that's a shame but i, I would I mean, those songs are written, I mean, there's a naivety to them. Right. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't uh, contrive that. You know, that's, that's something you lose. Yeah. But, you, but you like to think it's replaced with um, the ability to articulate. <laughs> you know, there's, or you, you uh, the craft of writing right. songs, you like to think it's replaced by something, something else. Yeah. Yeah. Substantial. I mean, I wish we could all stay naive and innocent. Oh, well, yeah, but life doesn't let us. That's very good. With you um, with being doing this now for 30 years as a mission, if you were to bring out an EP tomorrow that was compiled of four songs, of mission songs, from the whole of the back catalogue, what, which four songs would you choose? What would be the aim of this? EP? Just it's almost like your if you were to choose my it's like favorite your, song. It's like your desert island. Well, well, would it be like to say oh, this is what the mission is all about? I suppose it'd be a bit of both. Like I said, the whole desert island disc thing. If you were to choose four songs that you would be playing on the desert island, <coughs> that would be four mission songs that you'd be playing forever. What would that be? <laughs> I mean, it feels like we've been playing some of them forever. Uh, <laughs> a Tower of Strength would be one. Yeah. I mean, I think that that is a song that's hopefully that's totally some sort of a mission. I think it's bombastic, big, but it's celebratory. It's, it demands communion between us and the audience. That's a very really anthemic. Yeah, the, an the anthemic thing. You know, it's it's you know, it's full of bluster and. Well, it's, you know, it's you know that's. So it's kiss maybe. Be the first to come out with kiss. Like a child again. These are all songs that they're almost the same things that I'd have chosen. Yeah, like a child. Not maybe, maybe not. I mean. I think it's a great. I think it's a great song, but I, I don't necessarily think the record was the right record. Right. Way to record it the first time. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd have to pick something from the new album. You know, that one. You know. Probably my favourite track on the new album is probably Phantom Pain. Oh. With them, yeah friend and a former band member Martin Rathler doing this album that he's done with a collaboration with a lot of different people and I know you're collaborating with Martin Gore and Gary Newman on the new album. If you could choose anybody to collaborate with that you haven't, who would it be? I would love yeah. to sing with Massive Attack. Really? Yeah. I love Massive Attack. I think they have, they have guest vocalists. I mean they did the list phrase I think. Yeah, they did, and they, they, you know, they, they have always had guests. But they had, uh, the last album, they had uh, the guy in Garby, and yeah. uh, the girl from Magic Star, uh, uh, what's her name, Tracy Thorne's another one, she made it. I mean, they're all girls, really. Well, that's there's much hope for me, really. But, uh, I, I mean, I, I really like what they do, Massive Attack. And uh, if I keep saying, saying it enough, maybe I'll... Yeah, but, uh, you never know. <laughs> we could send this interview to them. They may know. They may. They may think. Yeah. Well, they're Bristol yeah, boys, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's where I'm born and bred, Bristol boy myself. With um, with your solo album being a success, particularly like with on the Vine being very popular on online radio shows like I am. Yeah. Um, are there any plans in the pipeline for you to do more solo stuff? There's no plan to do anything at the moment apart from get through this tour and stay alive. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite a long tour for us. Oh yeah, because it's Europe after. Yeah, and then in Australia and New Zealand. Um, so we don't. I don't actually get home back to Brazil until the middle of December. Yeah, so it's quite a, quite a trek, and um, so 
So, I mean, I'd, you know, I'd like to think that we were still talking to each other at the end of it, but we'll see. <laughs> but beyond that, uh, there, there are no plans. I mean, one thing that I've been asked to do for next year, which I'm kind of quite excited about, is um, to actually act in a film. Oh, wow. Be in a film, yeah. And um, I, I met the, the, the director of Brazilian, it's an English speaker, an English speaker. The director of Brazilian, and uh, so I had a meeting with him, and I was uh, thinking, ah, oh, he's going to ask me to do the score. Yeah, really, 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 it's going to be the music for the film. <laughs> and he said, right, we've got the script, we think, you're, we think you'd be great to play the lead male. <laughs> okay, so what, what, what's the character? So, well, it's a, a reclusive rock star, Who's a necrophiliac? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, why did you pick me? <laughs> so yeah, so that's that may, yeah. Hopefully that'll come up next year. Yeah. And um, oddly enough, next question leads on to um, with you being living in Brazil and you being an avid Liverpool football fan. Do you get to watch much English football on television? Yeah, get to watch more there than you would really? here. Yeah, I mean each weekend there's probably. Five, six, seven games. Oh, well, I mean, I, know I mean, I've not got watched them all, you know. But uh, did you get a chance to see any of the World Cup whilst you were in Brazil? I went there. Yeah, I went to see them in Uruguay. Really? Oh, the wow. match. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Nice. Yeah, we lost, of course. Well, yeah. But at the time, Luis Suarez, who scored both goals, yeah. was a little bit. Yeah, so that's very true. The defeat was tempered a little bit. I mean, I know you do like to have your Never Walk Alone flag on your keyboard when you're in the solo yeah, yeah, yeah. which went down really well in Leeds. Uh, I'm, I'm Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's it. And thinking about with the Leeds thing, with like Mick Brown and Craig being from Leeds and Mission starting in Leeds, mm. you're often referred to as a Leeds fan. Mm. Do you have any fond memories of being there? Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I joined the sisters, and when I first um, was in the band, I used to sleep on our just couch, you know, and, 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 and then that was I mean, we would rehearse downstairs. But then um, I um, found a house in the which was uh, Steve Watson, I don't know if you know. Yeah. You know Steve, yeah. So I lived with them. And I, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a good time. You know, I mean, I came into the sisters at a really good time. I mean, I came in just before Temple of Love was released. So I kind of reaped the benefits of uh, you know, mini celebrity status within Leeds just you know, by being in the sisters. It was, it was quite exciting. Um, but I s it soon became, uh, whenever I went on tour with the sisters and with the, and with the mission, I would get robbed. My house would get burgled. Really? Yeah. So, uh, so it was obviously somebody knew who it was and you were away on tour and just you know, buy a new record player and <laughs> take the TV, take the record player. So in the end, I mean, I ended up moving out to London. But yeah, no, I enjoyed Leeds. It was a good time. I mean, it was, it was, I can say, it was the first time really in my life I jo enjoyed celebrity stuff. I mean, going out to the warehouse. And yeah, I mean, it does seem weird because there's a lot of fans that are known for being from Leeds. I mean, like, I've spoke to Mark Hand a lot from Soft Cell, even though he's from South there. And it was only actually in Leeds for two years, but everybody sees Leeds as where they came from. Well, I was only in Leeds for yeah, yeah, it shows that it has that impact. Yeah. That's Leeds for us. Yeah. Uh, obviously, like we spoke before about you playing with you the solo tour, and now you're playing again, and playing with me twice in one year is a bit of a rare treat for everybody. Is it? Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, we, without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> I, what you're looking forward to most about playing with me again? And do you have any really any messages <laughs> for all the people that are eagerly waiting the mission to play with the Well, we're playing um, oh. on November the 5th, aren't we? It's bonfire. Yeah. Keep the fireworks out, so please. Yeah. Um, uh, not really. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the it's a strange show. Always a strange show with me because um, it's uh, an audience that makes an effort to look the part. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that, that is the large, probably a big part of the attraction for people to go there and to be with kindred spirits and to be with like minded souls and to be able to dress the way they want without, you know, being stared at, yeah. you know, in, in your own town. I mean, 
playing the shows themselves. I mean, the audience has always been great, weirdly, because it's a festival. And playing a festival as a solo artist, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I've done other festivals, most in real struggles. But with the audience, I always look at it and they're not really like me. Yeah. They're not good at how we see them really well.